everywhere that circles occur because it's just very common. So conic sections, where does this word conic come from? Well, it comes from the fact that you can take a cone, okay? This is called a double napped cone, fancy, two cones opposite of each other. If you cut the cone, slice it parallel to the base down here, you're just going to get a circle, which is what we're going to do today. Ah, oh, we would be doing this if Hofbauer could write. Okay, there, it's a circle. All right, if you cut it slightly at a slant, you'll get a shape called an ellipse. And that one's um, fairly easy, so we're going to save that one for next week. And I think Ms. Khan's going to teach that one for you guys. And tomorrow, we're going to do this, which is probably one of the hardest ones for students. It's just a parabola, but we're going to have a weird new definition of parabola, okay? And then when you have these two things that kind of look like double parabolas, they have slightly different definition, but they um, are two parts. This is called a hyperbola. All right, more on all of those to come. Today, we're going to stick with the basic circle. So our learning targets are to uh, graph a circle and find the center and radius, and then complete the square given a funky form so that we can then graph it and find the center and radius, or what's called standard form. And then also write the equation of a circle. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So the formula for circle or the standard form of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. Does this look familiar, guys? Okay. If I undo, do I have an undo that I can get to here? If I undo that and make this say r squared, does that look like the circle? Okay. The, the definition of what's called the locus of points for a circle is all points that are the same distance away from the center. Does that make sense? In a single plane, if it was three-dimensional, it would be a sphere, right? But if I said every point on my piece of paper two inches away from this dot, that would make a circle. Okay, so it's really related to the distance formula. All right, back up here, just like always, we have transformations. This is a shift. The center would go to the right h and up k so h and k is the center and it is the opposite of what this says because there's a minus in here and what do you think the radius is just r so this is r squared so you will need to square root if you're trying to find the radius all right so it is related to distance formula um, we're not going to fill in the back of that. This is at the top of 1A, okay? So, again, the formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And a radius uh, goes from the center to any point on the circle. And what is it called if it goes all the way across, guys? Through the center, both endpoints on, it's called a diameter. I, I didn't write that D in a very good spot. I'll just write here the whole word. Everybody okay? Diameter, it's all the way across. And the radius is... from the center to any point on the circle. 
I don't have a bunch of other crazy information for you to write because how many of you feel like you've seen circles before at some point? Everybody maybe? Okay. That's good news. All right. So this has no shifting left, right, or up, down. So where's the center at, guys? Yeah, zero, zero, or the origin. Good job. And this is our squared. So the radius is just seven. So can you graph that one real fast? Let's see who can make the best circle. It won't be me, I promise. We're going to zero, zero, and whoops, going out seven in a, all four directions and then trying to make a circle. Mine usually looks like a football. Or an egg or something that got kicked in on the side. I don't know. Look around. How's everybody doing? Who's got the best one? All right. So this next one is shifted. Where is the center of this one, guys? Remember, this is x minus h. So h is 1 y minus k, so k is 2, so we're over 1 and up 2 for the center, and then this is our squared, so the radius is 4. Remember, we just square root once. Sometimes students think, oh, well, 4 can be square root again. No, no, no. 1, 2, 3, 4. Whoops, that's not 4 off power. Now, I have a circle tool I could cheat and use. Whew. Well, three of those don't look bad. This side looks like it got dented. Everybody okay? Not too bad yet? All right, can you try this one on your own? Everybody get it in the right spot? All right. Oh, there's another one? Um, I, I'm just going to talk through this one. If you don't want to copy it down, I don't really care. We don't have to have a million of them in our notes. But tell me where the center would be real quick. One, zero. And the exact radius is what? Square root of 13. Can anybody type that so we can roughly graph this over one and up zero? Um, this little squiggle means approximately three point something, 3.6, thank you. So if you were to have to graph this, you would just you know go a little bit less than four and you'd be good. All right. Good enough. If you don't want to write that one down, you'll have to, ooh, that one's really nicely not hitting even the points. Okay, any questions? Graphing circles were golden. This is going to be uh, delta math tonight. If you don't want to take time to copy this all down on this number six, that's fine. I'm just showing you this example because we're going to practice going the other direction. So can you just watch up here real quick? If we had to make this all into what's called general conic form or a just big equation-y mess, x minus 9 squared, remember there's no shortcut, so we'd have to do x minus 9 times x minus 9, first times first, outer, inner, minus 9x, minus 9x, 
last times last, we'd have plus 81. And then the y plus 10, we'd have to do the same thing, foil it out. We have y squared plus 10y plus another 10y plus 10 times 10 is 100 equals 25. So general conic form, they would put the x squared and then the y squared. And then all the x's. How many x's do I have, guys? Negative 18, everybody okay? Where's a negative 9 and a negative 9? There's two of those. Over here, 10y plus 10y is 20y. And then they would put the constant at the back, 81 and 100, and we would need to subtract the 25 over. Can anybody do that for me? What's 181 minus 25? Uh... One fifty six. Did I get that right? Okay. That's what's called general conic form. We're going to have to do that backwards, and it's called completing the square. So what was the last thing I did there? Well, I put them in a weird order when really they were grouped by X's and Y's, right? So this is what we're going to do on number seven. We're going to Complete the square, and I'm going to give you some notes on that on the next slide, but let's just try it first, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put all the x's together, so I'm going to have x squared, and I'm going to move the minus 24x right behind that, and then I'm going to put a plus blank, because remember that's our completing the square fun, all right? And then what about the y's? Plus y squared, good job, plus 24y. We've got to watch that negative on the other one over there, and a plus blank. And then I'm actually going to move the constant to the other side, so that would be minus 252. And whatever I do the first blank, and the second blank on the left, I have to do the same thing on the right. All right, does anybody remember how we did completing the square? Yes, we're going to take this one and divide it by 2. Good job. So this is going to be x minus, because it was a negative 24, and it's going to be minus 12. Now, if I foiled that out like we just did on the other side, I would end up with x minus 12 times x minus 12, which would be x squared minus 24x plus what? What's 12 times 12? Yes, we square this and put it back in this blank. And it doesn't matter that it's negative. When you squared, it's going to become positive. And whatever we put on that side, we got to put one of those on the other side. So then we switch to the y's, and we do the same thing. We take half of this. This time, half of positive 24 would be plus 12. But when we square it and put it back up here, it's still 144. And then we're going to simplify this whole right-hand side after we've added both of those blanks in. And let's see, 288, is it 36? Does that look more like the circle we know and love from the front side of the worksheet? Okay, where's the center? Opposite of this and opposite of this would be positive 12 and negative 12, and the radius squared is 36. So the radius would be 6. Everybody good? Okay, I want you to try the next one.
What's the parenthesis with an X? Did anybody get that far? Yep, we're taking half of this and watch your sign. So that one was X minus 10. So what am I adding to both sides? 10 squared is 100 here and over here. So the next one, what are we doing with the Y? Good job, half of that would be plus three. Don't forget your squareds on those quantities, otherwise it's not a circle. And in the blank would go three squared, which would be nine. And then I don't know if this one comes out nice, let's see. Is it 41? Okay. You can just put square root of 41. If we had to graph it, 41 would be a little over six. Did you type it in? 6.4, but I'm, I'm fine. Actually, on these, it doesn't even ask you to write the center and the radius. I'm just trying to practice that today. 10 and negative 3. Everybody okay? Now, if you want to write this down to give yourself a little um, notes when you go back, these are my hints, okay? You don't have to write it down if you don't want. But we separated the x and the y's and, put, and set it equal to the constant. In other words, we move the constant to the other side. Does that, does that little bit of notes make sense? And while we were doing that, we added blanks for each side. And then what goes in the parentheses is what we call b over 2 because, remember if we had like x squared plus 8x, this is, uh, a is 1, b is 2, and we're trying to find c, remember, ax squared plus bx plus c, so we're taking that term and dividing it by 2. Um, and this should really be, keep the sign, so this should be plus, I guess. If it's positive here, it stays positive, if it's negative here, it stays negative. But then you square that, and that's what you add to both sides, okay? So maybe my little notes weren't helpful, but you got to be able to do this, and we're going to do it on every conic that we learn, okay? So one more. Try number nine on your own. I'm actually going to stop the video and see if anybody has questions. So how do we do? Did you get nine done at least? Say it again. <laughs> okay, so this one, half of plot, positive 16 would be positive 8. And then when we square it to put it in the blank, we'd get 64. Because, guys, the whole point now is that this would factor x plus 8, x plus 8. Okay? The y is messing you up. What's half of negative 2? Yep, y minus 1 squared. you got to be careful, though, because when you square negative 1, what do you get? Positive 1. Does everybody get that one right? Okay, and then over here, what is that? Is that like 104 or something? One, is it 104? So we'd have a, ver a center at negative 8, positive 1, and a radius of square root of 104, which would be a little over 10, right? Is it just like 10.1? 10.2? Okay. A really not important at this point. Okay. Feeling comfortable with completing the square? 
All right, I am going to jump down and talk just about a few more things here. We're going to have to write some equations. Now, some of you might be able to do this in your head right away. I can't. I have to at least write down the center. Can anybody tell me right now where the center of 11 is at? The circle is centered at 11, 10. Good job. Now we're supposed to shift it left 3. How are we going to go left 3 from 11? What would that become? 8, is that right? <coughs> and then we're supposed to take it and go down 5. 10 down 5 would become 5. Everybody good? So now we just need to write the new equation. So we shifted the center to here. So it would be x minus 8 squared plus y minus, it's always the opposite half power, minus 5 squared equals 19. The radius didn't change. Or the radius squared didn't change. Okay, try 12. Got to think a little bit. Got some negatives this time. The center is currently at what? Negative eight, positive two, okay? And if we go left five from negative eight, where would we be? Negative 13, good call. And if we're at positive two and we go down three, where would we be? Negative one, okay. So then what would that equation look like? You fast because r squared stayed the same. Everybody good? Those aren't too bad. I can't do them in my head without writing it down. I get confused which way I'm going, so you do you. All right, um, this gets a little, there's a, several ways you could do this. If I tell you a center and a point on a circle, we could find the radius using the distance formula, right? How many of you love the distance formula? It's like your favorite thing to do. So if I taught you a different way, that would be okay with you? <laughs> All right, so my different way is to call this H and K and start our equation, okay? So does someone tell me what that equation looks like if we just put in H and K? It would be X what? Plus seven squared plus y minus 15 quantity squared equals r squared, okay? Now, on this particular one, I think some of you could figure out the radius in your head from negative 7, 15 to negative 3, 15. They have the same y value, so they would both be up at the line 15, okay? And we could figure out how far it is from here to here, but I, I won't make this tricky. I'm just going to do it the same way for all of them. We're now going to put in a point on the circle. Remember when we put in a point, a lot of times to find things, we put it in for the X and the Y, right? Because it's not, it's actually on the circle. It's not in the circle. It's on the circle. So this should work for X and Y. So we have negative 3 plus 7 squared plus 15 minus 15 squared equals r squared. Oh, can we find r squared now? <coughs> I think you won't even need a calculator. What's negative 3 plus 7? 4 squared is 16, and this one is 0, right? So we have 16 equals r squared. That means the radius is 4, but do we really even need that if we're writing the equation? We need the radius squared, right? So we actually just need the 16 to go back in up here. So our final answer is just to put the 16 in here and we're done. X plus 7 squared plus Y minus 15 squared equals 16. All right, did anybody need to write this little note down about how we did those? Everybody good? Can you try the next one?
So I'm going to call this H and K, and then I'm going to put this in for an X and Y. I always write the first one down <coughs> first, and then put in. Now, if you want to just use your calculator for all this part, you can. Just make sure you put in the parentheses. And the squared is on the outside of the parentheses. I got 41, I think. Did anybody else get 41? Go ahead, Adria. I'd rather wait and let you type it in and make sure you get 41. You definitely don't have to show your work. You can just do it in your calculator. You're welcome to just type it just like this into the calculator. Everybody good? So final answer, somebody read me the equation. X plus 11. Careful. This was already R squared. That's where we have some trouble. Students think they need to square it or square root it. If it asked for R, you would get square root of 41, but when you go to plug it back in, R squared is just 41. Everybody okay? Nobody's going to make any silly mistakes there. It's not silly. It's easy to do. All right. Um, let's go to 16 and be done. I had to kind of draw this in. I think you have some of these on delta mass, so I put this one in, but can anybody tell where the center is? Negative 2, negative 2, and the radius, careful, these are 1, 2, 3, right? So the equation would just be x plus 2 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals what? 9. All right, so the practice is on delta math tonight. Delta math does not have a lot of conics, but circles it does have. So most of the other practice for the next several days, they, they, they do have parabolas, so I assigned a parabola delta math while I'm gone, so you'd have some feedback. Actually didn't assign much for circle practice while I'm gone, because I think you'll have it down after